I had an idea about how sad and unlucky my sister is. I came up with the perfect plan. What kind of plan? Just watch and see. Mary put on a fancy dress like one you'd wear to a wedding. She went to the microphone. When she got it, she turned to the guests and said confidently, Does anyone want to marry my sister? She's not very smart, and she's getting old. Right after she said this, Mary looked at her sister with a mean smile, but she didn't realize how rude she was being. The mood in the room changed quickly. People started whispering, and some guests gave Mary angry looks. Mary didn't know this and grabbed the microphone again. Come on, sister, you need to make yourself more appealing. There are lots of handsome doctors here. You really don't understand what you've done, do you? Then something major and unexpected happened. My name is Amy Steumer. I'm a 31-year-old woman with a regular job. There's nothing special about me except one thing. After middle school, I studied hard and became a lawyer. I have a sister named Mary who is three years younger than me. She's very charming and friendly, so our family always treated her specially. I'm not very noticeable, just plain and average. I'm not very charming, so my family and relatives didn't care about me much. I rarely felt any love and was often treated coldly at home. I couldn't compete with Mary's natural charm, and she got all of our parents' love. All I got were harsh looks. I worked very hard and got good grades, hoping to get some attention from my family, but I could never outshine Mary. Eventually, I got tired of trying to win my family's love and decided to focus on something else. I gave up on being loved and put all my energy into studying. I promised myself that I would find my worth through my knowledge. Studying hard gave me confidence and my efforts led to good results. I hoped that my success in school would one day earn me some praise from my parents. Holding on to this faint hope, I stayed up late every night studying. Throughout middle school, I was always at the top of my class and did better than other students in every test. But even then, my parents never praised me. Instead, they often criticized my grades. It's not just about being at the top. You need to get nearly perfect scores in every subject. Yes, even if you score 98% in science, it's not perfect. But this recent exam was really difficult. I would try to explain, but they called them excuses. Again, your lack of effort is why you get such results, my mother would say sharply, her voice as cold as ice. Are you proud of those less than perfect grades? All I could do was apologize. Yes, I'm sorry, I murmured softly. No matter how much time and effort I put in, my results never matched my parents' idea of perfect. They never acknowledged my efforts. Any score less than 101% was just a reason for them to scold me. But more than my parents' coldness, my sister Mary's seemingly innocent words hurt more. Oh, sister, are you getting lectured again? She would come into my room without permission and smirk at my report card. Good grades and still scolded. That's sad. I get praised for barely passing. Did you come here just to say that? I asked feeling frustrated. I was worried about you. Maybe you were feeling down again, Mary said, pretending to be concerned. But I didn't expect such a cold reception. If you were really worried, you wouldn't talk to me like that, I replied, trying to stay calm. See, that's your problem. You're always like this, so standoffish. That's why mom and dad don't show you love, Mary said, her gaze cold as ice. She looked down on me with clear contempt. For a brief moment, her attitude was obvious even as she left the room. After she was gone, I could hear her cheerful laughter with our parents from the living room. I should have been used to it by now, but the sadness overwhelmed me and tears streamed down my cheeks. I had told myself many times that I didn't need my parents' approval and that Mary's words wouldn't affect me. Yet my emotions betrayed me and I cried. In my hand was the crumpled report card, wrinkled from my tight grip. 
Once again, I resolved to stand on my own and break free from this suffocating family environment. I knew that excelling in my studies and improving my skills was my way out. From that moment on, I threw myself into my studies with even more determination. One day, as the cool breeze swept through the classroom windows, my father made an unexpected announcement. Amy, you won't be going to high school. You need to start looking for a job immediately, he said coldly. I was speechless, unable to hide my confusion. Why would you say something like that? I asked, my face blank with shock. Further investing in you is unnecessary. If you want to go to high school, you'll have to pay for it with your own money. If that's not possible, then you'll have to give up, my father said, dismissing my protests. But I'm still in middle school. There aren't many jobs available for someone my age. How am I supposed to? My words trailed off as my father ignored me. You need to accept this. After discussing it with your mother, we've decided to focus our finances on Mary. We can't afford to spend more on you, he declared firmly. That's not fair, I thought bitterly, but my father's decision was final. His words hit me like a sudden storm, draining all color from the world around me. My mother and sister looked on with undisguised smiles, seemingly enjoying my despair. I understand better now. There were options like finding schools with tuition waivers or scholarships, but back then, without knowing how to access that information, I was devastated by the end of my educational path. Since that day, my love for learning quickly faded. Even the praise from my homeroom teacher, who always admired my grades, felt empty. The lack of support for education at home made my chances of going to college seem even more hopeless. Right after graduation, I started working at a local factory. Since I wasn't old enough to live on my own yet, I stayed with my family until I turned 19, working hard and contributing most of my salary to the household. I saved whatever little money I could for myself, enduring those tough days that felt like crawling through an endless tunnel. On my 19th birthday, I left home. I left a letter for my family and walked away from the place that now only held memories. Their reaction was as if I had never existed. Complete silence, no phone calls or letters. Initially, living apart from my family was painful and loneliness shadowed my days. But with time, work kept me busy, easing the loneliness. Moving out and starting my own life relieved the stress I felt at home, bringing a mental clarity I hadn't known before. This newfound peace of mind revived my enthusiasm. I reignited my passion for learning and decided to start studying again from the basics, reviewing diligently. The joy of learning filled my heart once more. I moved on to high school textbooks and immersed myself in extensive reading. Along the way, I became captivated by books on law, sparking a deep interest in the legal profession. Despite only having a junior high education, I discovered the preliminary examination system that allowed me to pursue the bar exam. Armed with this knowledge, I intensified my dedication to studying, using every spare moment. Even during short breaks at work, I memorized legal terms during lunch breaks, always preparing for the bar exam. My colleagues, who were mostly older than me, noticed my sincere efforts and supported me. At the age of 24, I successfully passed the bar exam. With this achievement, I left my long-term job at the factory and secured a position at a prestigious law firm. After five years of training, I ventured out on my own and established my own law practice. Now I happily serve as a legal consultant for a hospital. Sometimes I wonder what would happen if I told my parents about becoming a lawyer. I think about their possible reactions and if I could finally meet their expectations. Yet deep down, I doubt I'll ever reach out to them. Unexpectedly, a reunion with my family came sooner than expected. One evening after work, I found a message on my phone from my younger sister, Mary. She was getting married. Mary is getting married, 
I whispered to myself. My 29-year-old sister was engaged to a doctor, and their wedding was scheduled for next month. They wanted me to be there. Despite the long estrangement from Mary and my parents, I couldn't ignore such a significant event, so I replied that I would attend. Mary quickly responded with the date and location of the ceremony. Her message ended with, don't forget the wedding gift, which made me smile wryly. It seemed Mary was more focused on the gift than on welcoming me. I arrived at Mary's wedding, hoping to reconnect with my family, if only briefly. I wore a carefully chosen blue dress and went through the entrance formalities before taking my seat in the family area, where my father and mother were already seated. You have some nerve showing up here. You must be doing well for yourself with your paltry earnings from the factory, my father said coldly. Indeed, it's embarrassing to have someone like her as family, my mother added with disdain. Mary shouldn't have invited someone like you, my father continued. I told them the same, but they insisted on taking the celebration money anyway, my mother said quietly. They had this conversation as if I wasn't even there. This was the harsh reality I faced. I had hoped that sharing my side might bridge the gap between us, but that hope was quickly shattered. Both my father and mother seemed determined to avoid speaking to me at all. In the quiet of the venue, I looked around and spotted some familiar faces among the groom's side. Hadn't I seen that person somewhere before? I wondered to myself, sensing a hint of deja vu. As I tried to recall where I knew them from, I lifted up the groom's name and my suspicion turned into certainty. The connection I had suspected was now clear. I couldn't help but feel a faint surprise. It was such a coincidence, almost like fate unfolding. Despite this revelation, I decided to keep my emotions in check and quietly observe the day unfold. The ceremony proceeded beautifully with the bride and groom making a grand entrance. Guests shared warm words and entertained, lightening the atmosphere. As time passed, the event shifted to dinner and then to photo sessions. Throughout it all, my parents got up without acknowledging me and moved toward the front where the bride and groom were waiting. Mary, drawn to them like a magnet, beamed happily in every photograph. Trying not to let the sight affect me, I quietly focused on the meal in front of me. Out of nowhere, my sister Mary came up to me. She approached with a smile, but her eyes held more than just happiness to see me after so many years. Hey, big sis, it's been ages, hasn't it? Are you glad we're spending time together like this? She asked. I nodded quietly and replied, Yes, the food at the party is really good. Mary smiled sarcastically, saying, You don't get fancy food like this at the factory where you work, do you? You should appreciate being here. Her words stung deep inside, but I didn't let it show on my face. Mary's tone grew sharper, almost mocking. Did I hurt your feelings? I'm sorry, but isn't it natural for you to feel a bit jealous, after all? Your little sister marrying a doctor and all. Mary said casually, as if the apology meant nothing. I kept my expression unchanged and quietly waited to see what she would do next. Then Mary whispered in my ear, Big sis, because I pity you, I've come up with a great idea. Trying to remain calm, I asked suspiciously, what idea? Mary, looking pleased with herself, replied, just wait and see. In her beautiful wedding gown, Mary captured everyone's attention. She grabbed a microphone from a staff member and suddenly announced to the guests, ladies and gentlemen, some of you may not know, my sister is here. She might not have the highest education or be the youngest, but if anyone is kind enough, could you please mentor her? I felt my face flush with embarrassment. What are you doing, Mary? I exclaimed. Mary continued even louder, even though she doesn't make much money and lives a simple life, is there someone here who can help improve my sister's future? All eyes were on me as Mary enjoyed my discomfort with a smug smile. Then unexpectedly, our usually gentle parents joined in. 
Please be kind to her, they added. I couldn't take it anymore. Anger boiled inside me. To be mocked like this at a joyful event. How far would they go? It was unbelievable, but now they would face the consequences. As the mood in the room shifted and whispers spread, Mary, oblivious to being the center of attention, cheerfully called out, Amy, look, there are so many doctors here. This could be your chance. I remained silent, but my resolute stare spoke volumes. Your games end here, I said firmly. Confused, Mary replied, huh. I responded calmly, you'll soon realize the gravity of what you've done. Just as Mary began to offer an excuse, the groom suddenly spoke up. Please wait, why is everyone getting up from their seats? The room fell silent as everyone turned to look at the groom. His co-workers from the hospital were standing up, starting to leave. Dislike his efforts to stop them, a dignified man who seemed to be the hospital director approached him with resolve. The recent comments made by the bride were so offensive that I'm shocked. I apologize, but we can't stay here any longer. We're leaving, the hospital director stated firmly. The groom rushed to intervene, taking responsibility for Mary's words and actions. Please wait, I acknowledge her words were out of line. I'll speak with her directly and make sure she understands. However, the hospital director underscored the seriousness of the situation and revealed something the groom wasn't aware of. It's not just that. Do you not know who her sister is? Confused, the groom admitted, no, I only met her sister today. I heard she worked in a factory after middle school. Clearly irritated, the hospital director responded, that's absurd. Her sister is a respected lawyer and serves as our hospital's legal advisor. The groom was taken aback by this revelation. He had no idea I held such a significant role. Mary and my parents were stunned as well. Unbeknownst to them, I was the legal advisor at the hospital where Mary Svayan K worked. Having seen him at hospital events before, the guests might have recognized me too. Mary's inappropriate remarks had exacerbated the situation, leaving the hospital director deeply offended. Although the groom had no personal connection to me, the hospital staff highly valued their legal advisor. The groom's face flushed red as he approached Mary, his voice rising. What is going on? Your thoughtless words have damaged my reputation. Mary stuttered, trying to defend herself like a confused child. I didn't mean it like that. I honestly didn't know my sister had such an important job. Furious, the groom continued to admonish Mary. Not knowing is no excuse. How could you speak so disrespectfully about your own sister? Your behavior is unacceptable. You've lost sight of what really matters. Mary, desperate to explain herself, pleaded, wait, please listen, there's a reason for all of this. But the groom, not willing to hear any more excuses, declared firmly, the engagement is over. I don't want to hear your explanations. This is where our relationship ends. Shocked by his words, Mary collapsed where she stood, her face drained of color. In a burst of anger, the groom stormed out of the wedding hall, followed by the other guests. Just as I was about to leave, I heard my sister's desperate cry behind me. Please, Amy, help me. Ignoring her plea, I turned back and faced her sternly. Help you. Why should I? You brought this upon yourself with your own actions. Making fun of others and then trying to play the victim is disgraceful. Mary, clearly confused and anxious, pleaded, why are you being so harsh? If I had known you were successful as a lawyer. With a calm yet resolute demeanor, I replied, why should I have informed someone who never bothered to reach out to me about my career? Actually, I had already decided to sever ties after this wedding. Now seeing how things turned out for you, I feel a sense of closure. You must be disappointed that your engagement to a doctor fell through. I suggest you work hard to find your next prospect. With those words, I left the venue gracefully. 
In the distance, I could hear the murmur of disapproval from my parents and other guests. Everything unfolded as I had anticipated, and Mary's marriage was called off. My parents, who had pinned their hopes on Mary marrying a doctor for security, expressed their anger toward her for the first time. Overwhelmed by their disappointment, Mary sought solace with a broken heart, but I turned a deaf ear to her pleas. I ignored her calls and cut off all ties with the family. I later learned that Mary had quit her job and was now unemployed, estranged from our parents and leading a reclusive life at home. As for me, I am content with both my professional and personal life, living peacefully without major issues. Although my relationship with my family has been strained, I am fortunate to have strong support from colleagues and friends in both my work and daily life. This positive environment is a result of years of hard work and dedication. While I face challenges along the way, overcoming them has shaped who I am today. Reflecting on my past struggles, I now appreciate their significance. My goal is to continue living a fulfilling life at my own pace, setting achievable goals and keeping stress levels manageable.